Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Doing something a little bit different. As you guys know, over here at Harmless Academy, one of our main focuses is helping people to survive the tribulation. Understanding that the Left Behind series is just a book, it's a myth, there's no fact in it. We really need to prepare for what's actually coming, and that's what's called the Great Tribulation. Years and years of some of the most catastrophic events this earth has ever known including war maybe even nuclear war we have meteors or even planets coming from outer space destroying parts of this planet we have an earthquake that's going to destroy the majority of the planet we have all of these plagues and viruses that we're already seeing we have volcanoes coming and then we have people just flat out killing each other and many more events that's going to basically destroy the majority of the humans that's on the planet you heard people talk about the 144,000 there's some talking about how they are the only people that survive the, the tribulation that's not far from the truth the 144,000 are the main ones that survive the tribulation but there are a lot of people who will be following their instructions, following their example, and they will make up what's called a multitude that will also survive the tribulation. But my point is, is that there's over 7 billion people about to die off of this planet. And so that's what we concentrate a lot on on our channel is helping people to understand what it is that we have to do in order to be prepared for that day to come. But now, as I study this more and more and look at the current events that's going on, I can't ignore the fact it seems that a lot of what's going on is all about black people, talking about African Americans. When they say Jacob's trouble, they're actually talking about black people. And in this short video, hopefully it's going to be short, I want to come down through here and prove to you that they're talking about African Americans not to be divisive or anything like that my purpose in this first of all is to give you guys a heads up let you know that all this that you see it out there in the streets all of this leading up to the black lives matter movement and all of this race war that's starting to kick off and all of this stuff about confederate flags and slave owners and all of this other stuff that seems to be race related it's not any accident. African Americans are and will be a target during this tribulation. So let me jump over here to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and I want to show you guys just a few verses that proves this. Now we just did a whole class on the covenant and you guys need to check out that it's a pretty healthy class at an hour and a half but it's very important when it comes to the law what it is and why it is that we're supposed to be keeping those commandments those instructions and how those instructions will help us get through the tribulation but we're up here in Deuteronomy 28 and Moses is referring back to those instructions you see right here in verse 1 Moses is telling them that if they were to hearken unto those instructions if they were to obey those commandments our father in heaven says that he will set you on high above all of the nations now this ain't just talking about African Americans this is talking to everybody that's why you have a Jewish community in the first place these people somehow found the Bible and actually went in and started adhering to these commandments back in about the 10th or the 11th century so you have to understand the story without going into all of the detail which you can go in and research for yourself the African Americans are the real children of Israel when they fled from Jerusalem all those many years ago they fled down into Africa and because their African cousins hated them and didn't want nothing to do with the father's covenant and rules they fought against them and made war against them and then when the slave ships showed up they caught them and sold them that's what it's talking about down here in verse 48 when it says and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck and then down here in verse 68 
when he says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, we understand that we're living in a modern day Egypt. That's why we have all those Egyptian symbols all over our dollars and all over our nation. This is modern day Egypt. All you have to remember is what culture was created back there in Egypt. When Joseph went in as a slave into Egypt, that was the first time that humanity ever had to pay to eat food. And we still do. We are still living under the Egyptian culture when we have to pay to eat food. Before Egypt, people always raised their food. Never did people have to spend money on food. And even to this day, the human species is the only species that has to pay to eat. Everything else eats for free on the whole entire planet. This is the Egyptian culture. The other thing that was created there in Egypt was the undertaker. And having to pay to be buried. And again, the human species is the only species on the planet that has to pay to die. That came from Egypt. Prisons also came from Egypt. That's why we live in what's called a modern day Egypt. America is the modern day Egypt. Along with other countries, any civilized country today is a modern day Egypt. But notice how in this verse that he's telling them that he's going to take them into this Egyptian culture by way of ships. And when you look at the Septuagint, the earliest translation of the Old Testament, it says in ships. Now, most people travel on ships. But here he's telling these people that they're actually going to go into Egypt in a ship. What he was talking about was in the belly of a slave ship. And how there they're going to become bondmen or slaves. Now name another race of people on the planet that has gone into slavery by way of a ship. And like we saw back there in verse 48 with iron yokes around their neck. Name another race of people in the whole world that has ever had iron shackles around their neck. The Africans that got off of those slave ships are the only race of people that fit this description. This is part of the curses that's also talked about there in chapter 28. You look right there at verse 15. It says, but, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to do all of his commandments and his statutes what I command thee this day. That all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And then it goes down and talks about curse after curse that if you look at seems to be plaguing the African-American race. See, this proves that the descendants of the slaves are who is being talked about in the books of Exodus and Deuteronomy and Numbers. Like I said, I don't want to make this video too long, but just to give you a quick summary of what's going on here. You have to remember the story of Joseph, how his brothers sold him into Egypt as a slave. And he spent several years there in Egypt as a slave until the world was about to be plagued by a huge famine. It was only in that moment as a famine was approaching that Joseph was actually allowed out of prison. With the mission of saving humanity. Humanity was about to die at that moment. Pharaoh had a dream that he couldn't understand. Joseph interpreted that dream and let Pharaoh know that there would be seven years of plenty where they needed to store up food. And then there would be seven years of famine that would plague the entire world and kill most of, of the humans on the planet. Well, that is what's going on now. The African-Americans, and I hate to keep leaving out the people in other countries, there's plenty of countries that received these slave ships, but these people were sent over to these nations, over to these countries as slaves and then as prisoners, knowing that there's coming a day when the world is going to suffer from plagues and other tribulation events that's threatening to kill all of humanity. Well, these people like Joseph will rise to the occasion in those moments and save humanity. But the thing is, you have to remember how devilish this world is 
and how there are so many people in the world that want nothing to do with the Father's commandments, his rules, his statutes, his judgments. And so they are actively trying to destroy anybody that tries to remember and keep these rules. See, that's what's talked about over there in Revelations chapter 12 and verse 17. The remnant that he's talking about are the few Israelites that's left. And to be Israel, to be spiritual Israel now means to keep the commandments. Just because you have the bloodlines of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob doesn't make you Israel. You actually have to be obeying the commandments or you'll be counted as a rebel or you'll be counted as a Gentile. But you see right here in verse 17 how it said that they're going to make war with those who keep the commandments. It ain't that they hate you because you're black. That's why many of them will say that they're not racist, even though they seem to be doing actions that make them seem like they're racist. They're not attacking you because you're black. They're attacking you because you have an inherent relationship with the Most High. Let me tell you what's about to happen. These people are going to keep targeting you and targeting you. This police brutality issue, just like the race war, is not over. It's just getting started. They're actually somewhere right now regrouping and planning their attack, if we want to be honest. But what's going to happen is, as they continue to mash down on the African American and harm them, these people are going to realize that protesting in the streets doesn't help. Walking around with picket signs and bullhorns. They're going to quit calling on politicians for help. And then they're going to start calling on our father in heaven for help. And that's what's going to change things. Just like when those children of Israel was over there in Egypt. And they called out as a collective group for our father to come and help them. He ran in and rescued that people from the Egyptians. This is what's getting ready to happen now here doing this tribulation. And they're going to call on him. And when he comes to rescue them, these nations that are harming them are going to be judged just like Egypt was. But that's why they're targeting you. Not because you're black or not because they don't want black people around. These people are targeting you because they don't want the father around. They don't want his rules around. They don't want anybody keeping the commandments and obeying the covenant because it threatens their new world order. And to prevent that from ever happening, what they have done is made it so that you don't know who you are. And even when you do find out who you are, you don't know what you're supposed to do in order to get the blessings promised over there in Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's called replacement theology, where first of all, they have replaced you with a whole nother race of people who call themselves Jewish. And then they have replaced the commandments and the covenant of the Bible with liberalism and a whole nother religion based on the Lost Behind series. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Hopefully I woke somebody up out there. Maybe you didn't know that you are the chosen people. Maybe you didn't quite understand why your black life matters. But again, I show you these two verses over here in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48 and verse 68. How he's identifying you specifically. Yokes of iron are born your neck. No other race of people has had a yoke of iron about their neck. This has never happened before or since have they put iron on anybody's neck except for the African slaves? When they did what? When they put them on ships, as you see over here in verse 68. So keep this in mind, guys, as you're seeing all of this stuff kick up, because it seems like it's increasing to the point where you can't really ignore it anymore. But, but the purpose of this, remember that in order for you to prevent this from happening to you, you need to get back in the commandments. You need to go back over and read the covenant. The covenant is Exodus chapter 20 through 23. That is your only way to survive this. 
Your guns are not going to help you. Your money is not going to help you. Your connections, your job, nothing is going to be able to help you except your obedience to the covenant. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. Please subscribe to our channel and hit that notifications button because we're always putting out classes related to this tribulation and what it's going to take for us to survive this tribulation. And if you got something out of this video, hit that like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.